Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. I hope that you're going to enjoy this video that I'm sharing with you. Wins, fails, you're going to get to see it once and all, but I hope you enjoy it. So remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. And remember, if you'd like to see me work with particular products, colours, uh, or a feeling that you want me to create or ideas for my channel, just let me know and I will give it a go. Uh, other than that, peace out. Be creative, be kind. Watch love. Hi everybody. Welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Resin's kicked my butt today. I've been in the studio all day. Only turned out one semi. Okay piece? The resin gods just have not been with me today. So I thought I'm going to come back and put my palette knife to canvas. And I'm going to start working through this project Give resin a rest for tonight and go back tomorrow fresh. So you can see a canvas board. Oh my, that's a stretch canvas board, which is 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. And that's 100% cotton by Arteza. And the stand that it is on is a natural pine wood stand, lightweight. And they are tripods that you can also get from Arteza. So I'm going to be working with the Arteza acrylic colour premium paints and a little bit of glitter and my palette knives and I'm just going to connect and I'll do my best to talk out loud uh, with the colours that I'm using. Some people have requested me to do a little bit of a step-by-step -step tutorial on the butterfly that I did when it was a collaboration stroke challenge with Miriam Y from Miriam's Nature and the wonderful Tammy Anderson. So I'm doing it on a smaller scale, but I thought what I could do is show you a bit closer and talk you through what I'm doing and why. Have a little bit of fun myself and recenter myself with my creative process and hopefully finish on a high and hopefully share in a piece that you don't mind watching me create and hopefully it inspires you to give it a go. All right, let's get on with this. As you'll notice, I've removed that tripod. So the tripod for me is going to be a stand to frame your artwork so it doesn't necessarily have to be on the wall. So I've swapped, flopped, swapped it out for one of my uh, other, um, oh my God, what are they called now? It's not a tripod, easel. <laughs> I've swapped it out for one of my easels. It's been a long day. And I've selected a few greens that I'm going to work with, only a little blob, so I'm going to show you what I do. So I'm going to have got, I've got deep green, which is A158. Viridian green, which is A136. Pale green, which is A109. Yellow green, which is A156. And lemon yellow, which is A102. Now, that's what I'm feeling at the minute. What I tend to do is dab little dots all over. So as I pull my brush through, it gathers it on the brush and hopefully you'll get a sense of depth or movement or a little bit of free day um, effect. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say. But I might come in and just paint the edges as well first. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to add these to my palette. I don't need to add them to my palette because it's going directly onto the canvas, Sharon. So I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the um, deep green just for around the edges. I, when I'm doing such as this, I enjoy applying it directly to the canvas. The reason being, it just saves a bit of time and then that way I'm going to get some nice blendings. I might need to add more of that, uh, but let me just paint it through and then I'll come back and talk to you. So this one may need two layers, it may not. I'll put thickish paint on there, but we'll see. The ideal thing is when you go over with multiple layers of acrylic onto canvas, it clings a little bit of the colour still comes through and it creates a little bit more depth uh, and brings a little bit colour through. So I've got my edges do. Just need for it to dry a little bit, then I can stand it back on here and we'll go on with the next stage. Just cleaning my brush now. Um, 
asking all the excess paint off onto the canvas. Okay, so I am now going to add tiny little dots speckled around a mixture of dark lights and then we'll graduate it and hopefully it'll bring through depth because there'll be some light some dark and some in between <laughs> all right so deep green is what's going on first and try not to add too much because it's a small canvas but i'm imagining that most likely on the outer maybe just a little bit on the in Let me go with the Viridian Green now. It should be just a slight different tone different. Slight different tone different. Is that even a word, Sharon? Yeah, you can see it. And I'm always put those at the side, but also some random ones as well. I know that there might be professional people out there cringing at doing it this way, but hey, it works for me. And this is what gives me some nice background. Blah. <laughs> backgrounds in some of my pieces. Now we're going to go to the pale green. Once you've done this once you'll know what more colours you need to come through with or add. But being acrylic you've got to work fairly quickly. Um, I'm going to be having, I think, some flowers when we do this. Pacing through to the yellow green. The thing that you might want to consider is the size of your paintbrush as to whether, oh, that needs a bit clean, you feel you want a small one because that will give you more perception of leaves. Oh dear. screen that one a bit deeper trying to get more to the fore front I might just add a tiny little bit of yellow all right so a tiny little bit of lemon yellow Let me work through this. All I'm going to do is backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and just blend it until I'm happy. And if I'm not happy, add some more paint. I've not washed off this brush mainly because I don't know why. I think it's because it's going to tone some of the colours through. But if you find that it's going quite tacky, uh, give it a wash. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, and just a light sweeping movement. So you get those nice colours coming through. This is where you start to work out if you've got enough darks in there or not. And don't be scared to keep going over it until you get it right. Okay, so what I'm sensing is get rid of that hair. <laughs> oh dear. Gonna drag that out. But definitely need some dark colours coming through. I need to alternate where my brush strokes are. And when you get that blurry look there, I kind of like it. It's like a little bit of depth of field. Take that side. I'm just going to drag it through the back here. Inside, under the bottom, once this is dried. All right. So I'm liking this so far, but I think I want to drag through 
some dark color. So I'm gonna go with the dark green. Mainly gonna go at the edges here. Reason being, I'm just getting a, a feeling that I wanna drag um, from the sides down. A bit more there, and then I can add some more light color if I feel that I've gone too dark. Maybe. I need another blob of dark there. Yeah, I quite like that stroke. And then you start to think, oh, I don't want to do that because that looks nice, but you will get it back. You just got to keep being willing to break it down to bring it back again. All right, so I'm going to use that what's left in my brush because that's going to, again, phase the colors through. But I'm going to start here and start with swiping it down. Since you've got my lighter at the back. Still think I need a little bit more dark on the top corners here. Come back, soften up the edges, flip it round. So now what I'm trying to do is just make the grass look like it's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to turn my brush on its side. I'm very mindful though that every time I leave a chunk of acrylic, if it dries like that, it's going to be very hard when I come back and do my top. So I'll just... I'm loving that side. Probably need to do something a little bit more with that. So I'm going to remove everything off my brush. Give it a, I'm not going to give it a clean out, but I'm going to add the final bit of deep green here. Maybe a little bit more there. Bit of the pale green. So, liking that a bit, but what I want to do now is just try and thin um, the representation of grass down a little bit. Just keep working it different ways. Just so it looks like light is capturing it in different angles. So, I'm kind of happy with that. What we're going to have to do now is allow this to dry uh, overnight because it's quite thick. But before I do that, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of glitter on here. 
It's your last chance to look to see if you're happy. And if you want to add anything else, so I'm going to add a little bit more dark here. Decided. There. And there. And there. Wanting to blur it, you see, so that it's not the main thing, but just a impression of it. So one step too far. So I'm gonna come back through and <laughs> do it all again until I'm happy with what I'm doing. All the whites that it's adding to that um, what am I trying to say Sharon all the time it is priming my board I got there in the end See, that's nice now soft it's tricking your eye to think that that's what that is grass but it's not really doing it so it'll be a very nice background to what we're going to do i think anyway and i've noticed another freaking air there let's just get that out sorry I know this is going to be painful for people seeing this. There we go. There you go, I think that's beautiful. So what I am going to do now is just get some glitter and blow it onto that a little bit while it is wet before it dries. So this is the Arteza 54 Shades of Glitter. Now it comes packaged where they're all stood in there nicely, but I've emptied it in there because I've got some other glitter I wanted to add in there. So I'm looking for a deep glitter I believe it's the shamrock green and I as it dries tomorrow we'll add some more right at the front of my flowers but at the minute this is the background and I'm gonna add some sorry shamrock glitter just gonna put a bit in my hand and blow it on there subtly so that that's that background sealed and then what will happen is tomorrow when it's dried I'll come in and I'll add some flower, flowers, abstract flowers. Let that dry and then I'll add a few more layers of um, stalks and that in front of it uh, with glitter on top. So you should have hopefully have a lot of depth, but quite like that. So when I say not a lot, 
is about this much here and I'm going to try and blow so I get a fairly even sort of coverage but it's a very nice little one and if I go what you've found is most of that glitter is stuck to that top area there not a lot here probably I'm going to blow a little bit more down there but if you um where to some it'll come off like that um, usually I've got this laid down flat so when it falls it's a little bit better but why do things the easy way you can do them the hard way anyway that is not distracted too much and uh, from different angles that is really uh, glistening I'll try and tilt it so you can see <gasps> that's how my day's going in the studio so what have we got to do? We've got to start it all again. I was about to show you how it glistened. I should have said, no, I'll bring it you back in the morning when it's dried. But no, it seems that my um, day continues in the studio. <laughs> As it's been all day. So I'm just going to smooth this out before it dries. And then I'm going to have to add some more colours. That's such a shame because I've got that so beautiful in my eyes anyway. All right. Back we go. Never give up, Sharon. So, yeah, most of those colours have all blended together now. But I can at least deal with that edge there that was bugging me. Okay. Time to get rid of the yunk chunks. Okay. And we are going to add. We're going to do that all again. Put the shamrock green glitter away, step away from the board. Make sure the animal's are not here, Sharon, and breathe. Then come back tomorrow and let's start applying some flowers. It's actually quite nice, even though I really like what I've done before. I really like this, but it's different. I wish I'd had both of them, but I can see some really nice tones coming through here. And um, there's a void here, which is fine, because this is where I'm going to feed some of my flowers. I'm probably just going to have three delicate flowers here and some glue leaves, which I'll show you what I mean. My brain's not working, so I'm not articulating well. And then finish off with a resin coat. But they are a beautiful pigment to work with these art at art ones, especially when you're wanting to paint. When I say correctly, I mean as far as with a brush or palette knife, but I am excited i know i'm being brave look i just want to get that excess thing off the bottom and i will see you tomorrow i hope you're having better luck than me today hi welcome back to sharon from vivid days this piece has now dried i'm just going to touch up my bottom edge but i quite like this as a background i'm trying to shimmy it around so you can see the different lights now there's quite a bit of glitter on the back 
but I'm not going to add too much to the foreground other than these purposeful uh, stripes that I'm going to put in that are going to be with the Peebo uh, mix -tion? mix -tion? mix -tion? I can never pronounce that. Anyway, you can see what it is. So you read it out for yourself. It's a really like, a, a relief mix mixture, <laughs> mixture, mixture. Maybe that's it. Anyway, it's from Geode or uh, Peebo Geode. It's designed for adding gold leaf or silver leaf. You apply it; it goes on white. It's got a very controlled sprout, which is what I spout, which is what I like. When it's ready for you to apply your glitter or gold leaf in, it would go more or less transparent. But follow the manufacturer's instructions. But I like to paint it on, let it dry for a little bit, and then I'm going to add my sea green glitter from Arteza, and I'm going to try and have some purposeful little strokes here, not to take away from the background, but to complement it. I then come in with some Arteza uh, acrylic paint and maybe put three flowers here and maybe suggestions of little buds. And then I'll top it all off with some resin. And, uh, but let's get on with this process. Welcome back to Sham from Vivid Days. I am going to now remove this excess glitter. I will reuse it, so don't stress. So I'm just gonna shake it off, get my brush, sweep it off gently, not making sure I don't pick the glue off. And then we are gonna come in with our flowers. And I'm gonna do three different color schemes per flower. I'm envisaging that I'm gonna be using Morph Pale, Neon Pink, Magenta Light, and pink and what I'll do is scratch a tiny little bit on my palette knife and, and pop it on and hopefully get some nice blending with that so that's going to be flower one flower two is most likely going to have a combination of brilliant red orange red orange yellow and deep yellow and the third flower sky blue cold blue gold bulb blue and ultramarine blue so i gently knock off the excess and then sorry it's going to be away from camera but i'm slowly going to then brush all the excess glitter off that should just need then some nice different strands of grass to help with that depth, grass or leaves, uh, which should then give me a platform for the flowers coming in. And then once I've done that, as I said before, I will come in and I will then put some more grass as the foreground. So trying to get rid of as much excess glitter as possible. So when I do apply the resin, there you go. So you get that little bit of a let me make sure I do get the excess glitter off though. And pull. Okay, so I'm going to just clear away this glitter, recycle it, and then we'll start doing those flowers. So I'm going to work with a palette knife like this and I'm just going to add the three colours and splodge them on. The splodge is an art technical term. So I'm not going to need too much and I'm not too sure if I'm actually going to work with all these colours so it depends on what they look like when they come out. So I'm just applying the neon 
that's already very very fluorescent <laughs> wait i might actually put them on the board and then tell you the order they're in all right so i'm going to be using let me see if you can see all that um just little blobs of the arteza paint to start with with my palette knife the idea being i'm going to scoop um the colors and then apply them quite liberally on my canvas and, and just work with it until I'm happy. So the colours here is the Neon Pink, Mauve Pale, Magenta Light and Pink. And then I am moving over to the Brilliant Red, Orange Red, Orange Yellow and Deep Yellow with Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue and sky blue and I'm going to see if I enjoy these colours when I'm putting them on and what they're going to look like so I'm just anticipating that I'll probably have my um, blues here and then maybe the pink and the orange there so I've I may add a little bit of yellow to this or a little bit of white but at the minute I'm just going to work with it as it is so I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of my dark tiny little bit of the cobalt and the slightly lighter and then I'm going to start applying this and see what happens.
think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm just going to work these petals here a little bit more. So I still have a lot of colour. Oh. Hey, I have just finished working on these flowers. I'm just going to take you in. You can see there's lots of texture, lots of paint on there, lots of, I'd say, variations. And the mind does sort of make you feel that they are flowers, even though they're not um, detailed. It's all a play on colours and strokes, and that's all I've got left in the paints I put out the blocks, and I'm kind of liking it. So what I need to do now is, sorry, the builders just out there still building that house. <laughs> I've just got to um, let this dry. Then what will happen is I will come back in and maybe add a little bit of highlights. I don't want to do it yet because I don't want to blend the colours too much, and so maybe add a little bit of the sparkle to say it's due and then just work on these stalks at the front um and then resin it and i think that's 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 done and hopefully that's given you an idea of what it is that i do and if you want to follow this process i'd i'd love to know how you go but i'm just going to make sure that they're here where it comes off the flowers it's just a little bit smooth so when i add the stalk it's going to connect correctly anyway i'm sharon i'm digressing We'll see you on the next stage. Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. So this has all dried and I'm just going to come in with some more pea bow, which is just going to give you the impression of where the stalks are going to be and maybe a little bit of foreground grass. And I'm going to come in with that shamrock green, which is the Arteza one. So this should take about a uh, an hour to cure but I put it on when it's clear I add my glitter and then I'll let it set for another hour maybe a day and then I brush off all the excess glitter gently to make sure I don't pull off the glue and then apply my coating resin and this piece should be done but I think it's a really bright happy piece anyway I'll fast forward you through this process Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Day. You can hear Zeus running around with one of his squeaky toys, which is a pig. So I apologise. This has set all day while I've been at work. So I'm going to come back and we are going to reveal this. So we're going to see what happens now. I'm taking away my excess glitter now. So just with a soft brush, like you're looking for treasure on Indiana Jones gonna brush that off and it should r reveal delicate stalks or pieces of grass or a suggestion of leaves in this magical garden and 
hopefully because I've used the lighter glitter, it's going to make it look like that is to the foreground. And they are just shimmering so. Now, glitter is a personal choice. I recycle every bit that is brushed onto the table. But I think it just adds a little bit of magic. Now, different angles will reveal different bits of glitter that's got to still come off. The more of the residue glitter you get off, the better it's going to be when you add your resin. I'll do it from different angles so I can see. Different parts of the glitter that may just come off. And the more you get off, the more defined that grass is gonna be. And the idea being, you've got a composition that's dark around the middle and brings yourself in to the center. It's quite pretty, so just gonna get that excess glitter off. And then, we are good to resin and this piece is done. And hopefully it's gonna encourage you to give something like this a go. So we're on to our final stage and I have leveled my board. So a tiny little board, but it's the one that I use from Arteza that you get the little tripods with, kind of cute. And I put push pins underneath to level because you wanna make sure you can uh, get your finger underneath for the resin, but also make sure it's level so you're not gonna have any dimples or any piece is not covered. I'm going to measure out my resin in the silicone cup that I get from Amazon and also the hairdressers silicone brushes, which is useful for spreading the resin around. I have gloved up. I always recommend wear a respirator when working with resin. I have my uh, blowtorch to get rid of any air bubbles. And the resin I'm going to be using is the Craft Resin, which is one part resin to one part hardener. It's fairly odorless and it says bubble free. You do get a few bubbles in there if you're using it straight out of the bottle, but they do come to the top very easily with either breathing on them or a little bit of heat, hence the uh, blow gone. But apparently if you were to uh, stand this in some warm water in the tubs, not getting the resin in water, but the tubs to heat it up, uh, that should also disperse your bubbles. But they're a UK brand and I'm actually really enjoying working with this at the minute. So yeah, so I'm going to mix no more than say 60 mils uh, yeah so 30 mil um, resin 30 mil hardener you can use resin calculator if you want to get the exact amount but I just want a very thin top coat just to bring the depth of the acrylic back and to seal in all that glitter so let's get on with this I mix my resin for three minutes and then we are good to go and the great thing with these you can use them over and over again and you can just pull the resin out of there wipe it around with an alcohol wipe when it's done and you're good to go again all right, Sharon, stop digressing. Let's get on with this. Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. This is the finished piece stood on its little tripod and that is available from um, Arteza again. And really happy with this composition. The resin itself is great, but I am gonna have to go back and touch up with a thin coat because I've used a canvas board. Uh, the resin, because of the weight of it, can pull in the middle and pull it away from the edges, which is what it's done here. So I'll just give it a, very thin coat uh, just to remove those imperfections but as far as it's dried beautifully everywhere else and I think this little piece is done and you get to see it once and all and you can improve on it yourself or put your own little spin on it 
but I quite like the delicateness of it. I like the sparkle, I love the depth, I love the colour and it's a fun little one to work on. So I encourage you to give it a go and I encourage you to let me know uh, if you do, what are your results and are you happy with them? What I might do is just hold this up a little bit. As I say, um, what I might do is get the natural light on it. You are gonna see all around the edge here where I'm referring to. And again, that's not the resin's fault, that's just using the canvas board. And that's some of the risks when you're using with canvas. So uh, one thin coat of that will fix that. Anyway, I'm sure and I'm digressing. Let's see if I can get you some natural light on this. Just remember, if you like my video, my art or the process, thumbs up, subscribe, share. Comments are always, always welcome. Help me get my art out there and let me know uh, if you found this video helpful or if you've got any ideas or colour schemes you'd like to see me work on. But be creative, be kind to people, let your imagination run free and be true to yourself as an artist. Break the rules, I say. <laughs> anyway, that's enough from me. Peace out. Bye.